what's up, Chiefs Kingdom? You're on an episode of Chiefs Focus Live. We got uh, Caleb, we got Tyron. What's up, bro? Long time listener, Chief, big Chiefs fan, big Chiefs fan. Yes, yes, yes. How y'all doing? On? Good, man. How you doing? Doing, doing all right, living. Yeah. Um, just enjoying the nice weather in Kansas City. I hear you, bro. Thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Long yeah, time, man. long time listener, follower since the beginning. I think when we started, so appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, so, got a little bit of, little bit of news going on. Now, hey, what's up, this? We got this joining in. What's up, bro? Um, got some <laughs> Buffalo issues that we talked about what, three months ago that are now starting to show rear their ugly head. That's, uh, kind of expected this to happen. We just didn't know when it was going to happen from what everybody, you know, what we were told anyway. And now it's showing its ugly head. <clears throat> looks like, uh, looks like they gave uh, Diggs an extension in March, a restructure for a lot of money. And now he's holding out. Doesn't want to go to mandatories. Doesn't want to do anything. He's just pissed off. I think he's mad about the rookies. I think he's mad about – also, he does not really, you know, from what – we like we talked about on other shows, he's not very trusting of the organization. Yeah. And that's not – he's not the only one. The entire team has been that way. So, oh, Philip, we got – we got Philip on. Uh, what's up, Phil? Um, what do you guys think? Go ahead, Tyron. Um – I've heard a lot of different comments. I've got, I got one pulled up right here from uh, Von Miller. He says, there's no guy above the team, but you but you handle certain guys a different way, and that's just how it is. And he's talking about digs in that because I guess a reporter asked him. Uh, Josh Allen was like, I, I love like I love Stephon Diggs. But mm-hmm. like I said earlier, um, if you're if a team like Buffalo is going to trade for a, a great wide receiver like Stephon Diggs, you're going to bring in the issues that he had at the previous organization because mm-hmm. he was dealing with with Minnesota too, and so and now he's in Buffalo and he's doing the exact same thing, and so I think I think the playoff game against the Bengals really frustrated him. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. You can, see, you can see the frustration on not only Josh Allen's face, but Stephon Diggs as well, because they couldn't get anything going. Um, but, I mean, at the later half of the season, like, they, they were struggling struggling offensively anyway. And so, um, yeah, I just – we'll see what happens. The team's <laughs> in turmoil, right? bro. The team's in turmoil. What do you think, Caleb? Um, I mean, I agree. I think once we look as a whole – there's been a lot of issues, a lot of issues. And because of that, we saw the Buffalo Bills have struggled. They have went to the heights of going to AC Championship game, getting basically blown out by the Chiefs. The next season after that, they put the Chiefs in division around. All the Bills fans thinking, oh, my goodness, we just beat Mahomes at this place. Josh Allen went crazy. And Mahomes like, nah, 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 13 seconds. <laughs> and then destroyed them there. So, I mean, in the, the year after that, we're seeing is that in the divisional round, they end up getting blown out by the Bengals at their home in the snow. So it's been a steady decline, and JP and I, we predicted, along with Quentin, is that the Bills are going to drop off. And this is one of the building blocks we eventually thought was going to happen. Now, does this surprise me? No. I think Stefan Diggs is a great player. I really do. But what I've noticed and what the problem is this, sometimes they say he's a locker room cancer, but if things are not going his way, he's going to make himself known. And that's just him, and that's his personality. There's been players like this before who have done it, um, guys, like I think Randy Moss did this eventually with the Vikings and then the Raiders. I mean, this doesn't surprise me that Diggs does. Now, the interesting part is this. Is he going to end up being with the Bills or are they going to trade him away? So those are the couple different issues we, I think that's going to happen. I don't see him going anywhere um, unless something crazy would happen. But if a trade happens, that would surprise me because Bears off his Instagram post. I don't know if you guys saw that on the screen. Yeah, just- do you remember what it said word for word? It's something. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, spit it out. That's one. I mean, it says, "I just be letting people cap. If them lies help you sleep better, tell them, big dog." Yeah, and it, I think he's talking about the restructure, which JP is talking about. So he and I mean, unfortunately, and this is I understand 
restructures are good, but I see sometimes why players don't like to do it because number one, they want their money. Number two, their promises. Not once did we see the Bills make any splash money. They lost two or three good pieces on the defense. They really didn't do much in free agency. They got an older Ron Miller coming off a contract. All that quote unquote D hop and all that other OBJ and all that stuff um, didn't pan out. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it's all going to work. So when it comes to this whole entire issue that's happening at the end of the day, I think he might do enough of us to get out there. I, I just will not be surprised. And this, this is correct. Please put that on the screen, JP. Diggs is a diva. Here's the thing with Diggs, man. Diggs makes – this dude makes T.O. and OBJ all look like saints. Are you sure I he mean, makes – are you sure T.O. though? T.O. was up there. But T.O. was – T.O. could actually back up everything he did. That dude was an Adonis. I've never seen anybody built the way he was built for somebody his size and to be able to play the way he played. Yes, he was a mouth. He was a trash talker, but he wasn't nearly as, um, I guess, he wasn't a baby like Diggs Mm. is. But, you know. When you think about it, you got Josh Allen that's a pretty good sized baby. Then you got Diggs that's a baby. You put those two in the same room together, it's just a recipe for disaster. Well, I don't know if you guys remember seeing this, but one thing I remember seeing specifically is whenever this all happened, you got traded there. Diggs was like, Allen and I are both just misunderstood. We're about to be just do great things. I mean, yeah, I mean it's kind of similar. You guys do some silly stuff every single week. So um it just it's it's interesting to see. And I just kind of it's going to be interesting to monitor that. If he's going to first his way out there, are they going to have a common agreement? But I think not this year. If he doesn't get traded this year, it'll be next season. He'll be gone, just like it was the Vikings. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And he's he's running out of time. It's not like he's – what is he about uh, – I think he's 28, right? I believe so. I can look Yeah, I think he's 28 him. years old. So it's not like he's got a ton of time. I mean, he's got four or five good years left in him. And then – Yeah, he's 29. 29. So, I mean, you know, maybe four good years left and he's done. But he he's made his bed a couple of times, and now he's got a lie in it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think – look, McDermott's on the hot seat. There's no doubt about that. We know this. This has been a story that we've been talking about for a while, about the turmoil going on in Buffalo. And now it's just mm-hmm. starting to show up. But Or come, I guess, publicly, I should say. Yeah. But uh, he's he's a cancer. I mean, they were considering bringing in D-Hop. They considered bringing in OBJ. But here's the issue. I don't know if you guys agree with me with this, but can he coexist with another number no. one receiver? No. That's the he wants his targets. So That's I mean, the problem. But yeah, that is the problem. So that's just kind of one of the issues we're going to see from here on out. If can he, I think maybe his third go around, if it happens, he's going to have to really look at himself in the mirror and try to figure out, oh, this really, I can't act this way. I got to figure out something different. So we got to humble himself at some point. He has to humble himself because this is a league now. Everybody's trying to mimic what the Chiefs are doing with the true spread offense. And Mm -hmm. if you're going to be that guy that wants to be the number one guy, you're going to fail in this league right now. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. You're going to fail. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just uh, either go with the flow and get your, get your rings and get your million for winning a Super Bowl, get your 500,000 per playoff game for winning playoff games or move on. I mean, mm-hmm. it's that simple. I mean, he's yeah. he's starting to act like AB. He hasn't gotten well, that crazy, but mm-hmm. you know, the, the the end of that Cincinnati game kind of proved who he was. You know, yeah. screaming, "I'm that guy!" hitting himself mm-hmm. in the chest after he lost. I mean, and, I, and this is one thing I've noticed too. Yeah, there's going to be some difficult times, but eventually, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is this. Either you're going to be a team player or you're not going to be a team player. And I think Dix has the ability to be a team player, but I think he's had so much look from what I looked at his backstory of having stuff, quote unquote, on his back, dealing what he had to deal with as a kid, and specifically what we saw he had to deal with at Maryland with a bad team, and he was a six round pick, and he has a big chip on his shoulder, respectfully so. I'm just wondering if that's going to cause him. I feel like he's a great receiver, but he's that step away. And I don't think it's, quote unquote, going to a Super Bowl. I think it's being a good player within the locker room. D Hop, you ever you don't really have hear any issues about him. Uh, guys like A B, he's kind of submitting himself before he had the issue. We believe he has CT. I mean, there's other receivers you can look at and see. They have separated themselves due to a lot of different areas. So there's a lot yeah. of different things there. So. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems yeah. like uh 
it seems like they're going to be that team that you're going to hear about about week five or week six that everybody's going to be saying there, there's no way they're making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's just kind of how I feel about it. The, the more this boils, I mean, I had a feeling they were going to end up being probably third in the division. Now I almost feel like they could actually lose that division. Well, if he's not there, I can see that happening for sure. So yeah, that's yeah. one of the things. Yep. Well, we all know about Frank Clark going to the Broncos. There's been so many different st- stories out there. The Broncos fans think they just won the Super Bowl. Um, mm-hmm. I They can talk what they want. It doesn't really matter at this point. One player – look, for, I'm sorry, Frank Clark's a great player, but he can't make Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson any better. Um, he did, He's not on that side of the ball. So – I don't think Sean Payton is the guy that's going to make them a Super Bowl contender, especially their first year and with Russell Wilson. The one thing I can say about Sean Payton is he's not afraid to bench anybody. Mm -hmm. So if it comes down to it and you're at week three, week four, week five, and Russell Wilson's playing the way he did last year, you might see Russell Wilson holding the clipboard or maybe not even in the stadium. Mm -hmm. So that that's okay with me. I mean, I don't care. I I don't really like the man anyway. I think he's a diva. And from what I understand, uh, one of the stipulations with Peyton going there was that Russell lost all of his personal chefs, his, his main office, all of his personal masseuses and everything else that was there are no longer there. Hmm. So he is a regular person, regular player, just like everybody else on that football team. And that's so, what I think is part of the So problem. I do have a question kind of for Tyron. I mean, you saw all the things kind of happen with Russell Wilson. You probably saw all the memes. I mean, what was your take on the season and now? Do you think, like, he's done if he has, like, a first quarter of the season just absolutely craps the bed? Say he the first five games, he just does terrible. What do you think is going to happen? Because you've seen all the memes. You've seen all the speculation stuff. What are your thoughts? I, I, I think right now, at least for me, it's too hard to tell. Mm. Um, I mean, he's got, he's got good weapons around him, you know? Like, I mean, they, they signed the, the Bengals' backup P Ryan, is that what his name is? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I signed P Ryan. If Corlin Sutton can stay healthy, Jerry Judy, is a, he's a dog. And then uh, is it Hamler? KJ Hamler? Yes, yeah. KJ Hamler's one. Like, he, like, I mean, they, he's got the weapons around him. I, I just think he needed a better coach. And I think Sean Payton is mm-hmm. that coach. But obviously, we saw last year with Russell Wilson, like, you can you can only go coaching so far because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, the coach calls the plays, but the players are the ones that execute the play. Exactly. Yep. So like if Russell Wilson, it it's not like it's 2013, 2014, 2015, Russ. It, it's it's just not. He's older. He's older now, and the game is a lot faster. The secondary is a lot faster. They're smarter, bigger, and it's. I think he just forces some throws sometimes mm-hmm. and it's either incomplete or it's going the other way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I, I like Russell Wilson, man, but just over the last few years, like I think it was the COVID season. Mm-hmm. It was like, he was like MVP caliber up until like week seven. Yeah. And then like, Let Russ cook. That's how he was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was, he was great yeah. until week yeah. seven every year. It seemed like. Mm-hmm. I've been in the same since. Yeah. He went from yeah. cooking steaks so, to cooking beans. Yeah, yeah. He was burning yeah. water is what he I was just, doing. I hope he figures it out. I mean, at least at least for for our sake to have a little, at least a little bit of comp- competition in the division, you know. But like, it's just the Broncos are going to Bronco, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, yeah. you know, one thing I have said, and I don't know, maybe people. Do, you'll disagree with me or not, but he lived off of a really good defense and a great running back for most of his, you know, the beginning of his career. And it seemed like when Lynch was gone and the defense kind of went downhill, it was Russ trying to take everything on himself and running everywhere and doing all the stuff that he did, but it got him nowhere. It got him absolutely nowhere. And we do know now, I mean, we talked about it before, but, it's actually come out that Pete Carroll did want to cut him starting in 2018. He wanted to trade him and that wasn't something that was going to happen. You know, the ownership didn't want it. President didn't want it. Nobody wanted it. Well, when it finally, you know, happened and Geno Smith just outshines him. 
I mean, makes him look like a chump. Yeah. Then, you know, then it's time to go, okay, well, maybe he just sucks. Maybe he's just not what they thought he was. And I'm not saying he sucks. He's been in the NFL for a long time. He's a good ball player. He's just not, he's not whatever, he's not this, let me do the mantra in the middle of the field and spin in circles and have all this extra shit. He's not that good. He's, he's just not. Yeah. <laughs> And he's on the plane. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think I like Russell Wilson as a person. I feel like sometimes he's too little arrogant. That's me personally. But I think he could play. But I think you mean he's Jay-Z? Represent- right, a good point. Yeah. He's, he's that Jay-Z. player that shows me is this. You have to have a purpose storm. Kind of like Terry Bradshaw. And if you guys probably know what I'm talking about. JP, you definitely know. But he had a very good defense and had some good receivers. And he survived a very long time and won four Super Bowls. I feel like Russell Wilson's like that a little bit because when he had a run game, when he had a good defense, and he, didn't, and he had some decent weapons, he was able to do well. But as the defense started falling apart piece by piece, and it started, and, and when it started to be, no, we're not going to worry about the defense. Let's let Russell Wilson run the show. We start seeing and finding out pretty quickly, oh, that's not really going to work out. No matter how many ways Pete Carroll is able to basically, uh, basically disguise the problems he was having in certain areas, he allowed him to – she was able to get him to shine in certain areas. But now we see the Seahawks basically fleeced him in that trade, pretty much fleeced him, basically told him he was going to be the second coming. He might be what Peyton Manning did for the Colts, and they got the exact opposite, and they got to keep their weapons. So no wonder why Geno Simp had a up year. He's just a younger guy, more mobile, and he's able to play better with the weapons. And, yeah, you can say the defense is there a little bit, kind of, but they're starting to get to the Seahawks of old. Football is a complete game. It's not just Russell Wilson on the sidelines saying, "Let uh, let's see what he say, Broncos country, let's ride." No, it's like let's as a good collective, let's work. And what we're seeing it, it seemed like it was Russell Wilson above everyone else, and that's what became the real problem. And once we start seeing that as fans, that's where the memes and all the issues happen because Russell Wilson can play, but he did not have adequate help. And with all due respect, Nathaniel Hackett was not in a good position. The Broncos originally got him hoping they were going to get Aaron Rodgers. That was not the case. And with all those things that were happening as a whole, this is the issue the Broncos have to deal with. Now they brought in Sean Payton, but he has a long way to figure things out, the salary cap issue and all these different things. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to be able to do. I'm still going to give them third right now because the Raiders are just the Raiders. I mean, look, they suck. Um, They're not going to get any better because – of any reason. They're just not. They didn't do that much to improve their team, and they still have Josh McDaniels, and again, Mark Davis still owns the football team. So, Mm -hmm. I don't see them doing much. I think the Chargers may be, because Staley's on the hot seat again, Mm -hmm. and he made some moves to um, keep his job this year, similar to what Josh McDaniels did last year to a degree, but uh, At some point, it's going to come down to, okay, if they don't make the playoffs this year or at least win a playoff game, they're done. Mm -hmm. Staley's done, but I feel like they're a better football team than the other two in the league right now. Mm -hmm. So in our division, I should say. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, Right now, I still have it. I I think the Chargers will come in second. I think the Broncos will be third. The Raiders are going to be dead Mm -hmm. last again. Mm, okay. just is, it, it, that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. What, what do you got, Tyron? What do you got as your uh, four p- uh, teams, Nancy? What's your ranking? For AFC West? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Kansas City, number one. Uh, Chargers knocking on the door just mm-hmm. like they were last year, but can't get it done. So there will be two. I actually have it flipped. I think the Raiders will be better than what people think they are. And I think they'll be third in the division, and then Broncos will be last. Mm, okay. I, wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I think the Chargers are going to take a step back. I think the Broncos could take the number two spot. That's what I feel like. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I think at the end of the day, if that, if something crazy like that were to happen, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it's not. We're not dealing with like the AFC least with Tom Brady had all those years. What we're seeing with uh, as a whole, Mahomes has been dealing with. I mean, even these games where these teams are not good, they're giving them literally their hardest fight as a whole. And with all those things that are happening as a whole, it's just caused a lot of things to happen. So I think at the end of the day, 
we're going to see. It's going to be a flip flop between those other groups of three. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Fist says he didn't have that kind of belief in the Raiders. I have a hard time with that one too. I mean, I do. It, it's just me though. But I don't. I don't. I don't believe in Josh McDaniels. I don't believe in his philosophy. I don't think he's a good all around coach. I think he's. Mm. I think he learned a lot as an offensive coordinator simply because, and I don't even know if it's so much learning a lot that it is just the repetition of it all, and then having Tom Brady there and some great weapons mm-hmm. to, you know, to back up his quote unquote or solidify his uh, game to a degree. But, you know, he screwed over the Broncos and got caught cheating. Yeah. He screwed over the Colts the day they were going to announce it. In fact, it, he was supposed to walk up on the podium and turned, turned it away. Mm-hmm. So now we're at a point where um, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you have to um, – you have to realize that he's not a good head coach. Mm-hmm. He's a good offensive coordinator, but he's not a good head coach. Mm. That's just how it's going to be. Um, I don't know. But mm. I, I, I think the Raiders are still going to come in dead last. I don't think Brady did anything for, for them besides maybe bail Davis out of some trouble huh. financially um, because he's a mess. Mm-hmm. All the way around, he keeps buying – outside teams. I mean, he owns a WNBA team. Now I think he's buying a soccer team. He's trying to make his money. I mean, I can't blame him. He's trying to profit. He's just too. buying into the wrong areas. He's The problem is, is that when you try to be a one-man show, mm-hmm. you end up falling on your ass, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, because you're a one-man show. You can't run three different organizations of that size and expect to be successful. Mm-hmm. And it seems like to me that he's letting, I mean, he's let the Raiders go since 2002, since his dad died. Really, the Raiders haven't been in. Yeah, they have uh, struggled. Yeah. I so it, to, to, to me, it seems like um, <laughs> it may be happening this year at this uh, Tom Brady Raiders quarterback 2024. It may just happen this year. Now, uh, he will lose all credibility if he ends up man. coming out of retirement for the second time. So. Well, think about it. It was almost too perfect. And we talked about this with Adam Rank on the show. Well, after the show, but if you could really think about it, it's like a perfect scenario. Okay. He's got his buddy, Josh McDaniels. He's got the GM. That's his buddy. Who else is there? Um, somebody else. that's his buddy there, Danny Amendola. Yeah. And then you got Jimmy Garoppolo that there's no love loss between any, either one of those two guys. And he's mm-hmm. in a boot with a bad yeah. foot and nobody knows whether he's going to start or not. And who do they got for a backup? Uh, that's a good question. So they're in an interesting spot, and that's yeah. why the Raiders could potentially be third to last in the division. Yeah, so. and it really – I feel like – I feel like – and look, this ain't wrong. I feel like Tom's uh, Tom likes preparation, and I think he he's not wrong. I mean, Thiz actually brought this up to me one night, and I felt like an idiot because I never thought about it, and I never put two and two together. And I thought, wow, this is really like the perfect storm. So then I asked a guy here. I said, is this idiot going to play? I don't know. Probably. And I said, come on, man, tell me the truth. I said, is he going to play or not? And he goes, probably. I said, probably don't cut it. Either he's going to play or he's not going to play. Just tell me the truth. What's what's his plans? And he goes, well, don't be surprised if you don't see him in a Raiders uniform at some point. So I got a weird feeling we might see Brady dressed up in a Mm -hmm. uniform out there trying to play. And the fact that you know, he feels like he's, you know, still got somewhat of an arm. Um, Brian Hoyer. I mean, there you go. There's a great example. He's been a backup for a long time with many yeah. different teams. Yeah, that guy's, I mean, he's been on like, what, eight teams or something? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, I don't know. Is there any Huh? Is there any, role, is there any role with, like, being a minority stakeholder in a team and there's not? Not at all, man. Okay. Well, he's all. gonna play. <laughs> Watch. There's no rule about it. So uh it's he's trying to pull the Michael Jordan, bro. Michael Jordan bought Washington and played for him for two years. He wasn't the same Michael Jordan, but he still played and he was still somewhat effective. If he I I would have my only thought about this is why would he okay, he avoided the good divisions when for 20 years, 22 years. He avoided every good division. Yep, he was with the Patriots that had three horrible teams in their division for what 
18 years. And then Fantasy when the, farm, farm League with occasional Jets would have a spurt. The Bills had a spurt. I mean, yeah, but, but it was not nothing, much. not much. I mean, he was guaranteed six wins a year, pretty much. Then you, you go, I could go to San Francisco. I can go to the Chargers. The Raiders wanted me as well. But I'm going to take the Bucks because that division really sucks. And I can be the man there too. And they had a stacked football team. A stacked football team without the quarterback. So they did exactly what he did exactly what he knew he should have done is solidify the fact that he's supposed to be the greatest of all time. Statistically, if you go by rings, he is. If you take time out of the equation, he's not. So it's really hard to distinguish if he's the greatest of all time or if he isn't because he's played, he played 22 seasons. Okay. Mm. He had top five when he won. We talked about this when he won his Super Bowls or was in the AFC championship game. He had a top five, top 10 defense. Every one of those years, the three years that he lost, he had a top 15 or above defense. And he had Randy Moss. And lost. 27 season into his okay. I mean, come on, man. I it just it, it's it, there's just too much there to uh, there was just too much there to say, okay, yeah, he um he doesn't want to I mean he's he's an egotistical bastard. He, it's like all about him, you know. So I, I can't see him he's gonna if he announces himself playing, it's gonna happen. During some big event, whether it be training camp or some big signing or something's going to happen, and then Brady's going to pop off and say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and play for the Raiders because we don't have a quarterback. You know, mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo's not going to be ready. So, I'm, I mean, I'm their, I'm their only option. So, that's that's basically how it's going to be. So, uh, I don't know. Um, well, speaking of big signings, what do you guys think of the whole Chris Jones news of him not going to main to a remaining camp? I mean, he pulled this the last time around. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts on here from Tyron first? Um, I'm I'm not too I'm not too concerned, honestly. Um, like you said, he I mean he's done it before. They got they got something done, and I know he wants to be here in Kansas City. Um, but yeah, I saw I saw a tweet earlier today, and it was like, uh, he's not he's not that. He doesn't show up in the regular season anyway. I was like, "What are you talking about?" Hmm. Yeah, I was like, "What are you, what, what are you talking about?" He just got his first playoff sack in the playoffs last year. Like, what, mm-hmm. is, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, you, you must not be watching football then. I don't know what you're watching, but it ain't, it ain't the Chiefs' defense. That's the word I was looking for. He's right, narcissistic. That's Brady yeah. in a nutshell, right there. Um, Chris is pissed off right now about the Frank Clark thing. He wanted Frank to come back, and it didn't happen. We offered him a certain amount of money. Sean Payton duped him. It is what it is. He got duped. The Broncos said, hey, man, come over here. We're going to give you $5.5 million guaranteed. We're going to give you up $7.5 million in incentives. You're going to be the guy, and he's probably going to be a third down guy. He's kind of what Von Miller was guy. with. Um, what he was supposed to be with. Bills. Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel bad for him, but in the same aspect, this is absolutely right. Chris has to get over it. Um, well, his, you, go ahead. Go ahead. I, his money, the money he was agreed to restructure on months ago, which is the exact same thing he did the first time, and then they waited, they waited, he held out, then he played, then he got his deal done at the end of the season. <clears throat> It's probably mm-hmm. we're probably going to hear something that the deal gets done prior to that this year because we need the cap space because yeah because I they mean want to sign a defensive edge so. when we look at it, I mean I don't know how you feel about it, Tyron JP and I have discussed this relentlessly but do you think if they get the deal done would you want the Chiefs go after Diop I know that's kind of a different transition but I mean I feel like these moves are like a domino effect one affects the other how how do you feel about that I'm cool with the receiving core that we have right now okay I don't that's fine. I don't. I don't really see – I get it, like, people want, like, the wide receiver one and things like that. But if Kadarius Tony stays healthy and they mm-hmm. say that he's going to be wide receiver one, like, I'm I'm cool with that. 
is he Kadarius Tony has shown flashes of what he's capable of. Like he's a, he's a hard receiver to take down. He he's shifty. He bounces off of guys. Um, I really like the pick with Rasheed Rice. I really like that pick, even though I wanted Quentin Johnston. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw that in the group chat. I wanted him so bad. I was so yeah. mad when the Chargers took him. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I I went back and watched Rasheed Rice's film, and I was like, okay, like yes, it's from a a mid major conference, but a lot of guys come from mid major conferences and produce really well in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And I think he's, I think Rasheed Rice is that guy. Um, but I I honestly don't want D Hop. I get I get like the hype around it because like he's arguably like a top five receiver and but he's getting up there in age and I don't know why you would move on from Tyreek Hill and then mm-hmm. go after another exactly. top five receiver that's, that's getting up in age too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um I honestly don't see the Chiefs making that move. Um I think they're cool with what they have right now. I think MBS is gonna have a strong second year. In Andy Reid's offense. Thank you. Uh, I think Kadarius Tony, Kadarius Tony, that's my guy, man. I've liked him since he's played in Florida. So, um, so yeah, I think I think our receiving core is going to be just fine. I think Sky Moore is going to have a big season with McColgan. Um, yeah. So I don't I don't want D Hop. Mm. Well, I will tell you this. I think. You you hit everything right. I mean everything right. You're not going to go after. You're not going to pay somebody. Look, he D Hop's going to want fifteen to eighteen million a year. Yeah, why? That's, because they were the Jay got that kind of money. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this three four weeks ago that he was going to want big money, and now they're saying he wants big money. Well, why does he want big money? Because in the market this year was the notoriously low for wide receiver in the wide receiver market. The money was just not there. You know, you saw two, three year deals for 15 million, 16 mm-hmm. million, but you didn't see 15 million a year. Mm-hmm. You saw seven to 10 million a year, maybe 12 at the most. But when that OBJ deal got done, that's when he decided he wanted more money and the mm-hmm. chiefs are not going to pay him. Never. Mm-hmm. Are they going to pay him 15 to 18 million a year? And not this with is, the score that we have. And this is what it comes down to. And Tyler, you probably heard me say this before. It's either going to come down to a ring or money. Pick one of the two. Do you want to have a ring or do you want money? And that's and obviously it looks like he is going to pick the money. That's why I feel like personally, I mean, everyone can go and say, I want to be in a stable team and to do this, that, and a third. I mean, those teams he listed, he has not taken a visit with. He's taken a visit with the Titans. He's taken a visit with the Patriots. Um, the only team I could also see maybe going to was the Bears, but I mean that would go completely against his whole understanding and ideology and belief. So some players want the ring, some want the money, and hey, at the end of the day, it's on them. I do get a little frustrated when I hear players say that I want to win a Super Bowl, and then they join like the Jets. I'm like, come on now. I mean, seriously. I mean, a prime example uh was I think what was it Whitney Merciless? I think when he was the Texans a couple seasons ago, he was gonna look go join Kansas City and join the Packers, and they flopped. So I mean, like. Yeah. I don't know. It, it frustrates me, but regardless, at the end of the day, the Chiefs are bringing in the right players. Rather, it's through the draft or it's undrafted free agent or they're taking up good players from other teams. So it's not hurting me, but I just I just felt like we were going to get all this top blow of top cheap, and evidently that is just not going to happen. You don't need it's it. Business. I mean, that's the thing yeah. is that, you know, there's always going to be a team out there that says they have to have the guy with the big name. We have proven that we don't need that guy. We did it last year. I mean, for Christ's sake, we won with 10 rookies on the team and seven that were active throughout the season. Mm -hmm. We don't need, we don't need those big name guys. We Mm -hmm. just don't need them. And Mahomes makes everybody better. It's that simple. So, and what he just said about Kadarius Tony, he's right. I absolutely love this kid. I know Quentin's been down on him because he had some injuries, but look, every injury he had, Prior to coming to Kansas City with soft injury, uh, soft tissue injuries. Why? Because the Giants have one of the shittiest medical staffs in football. 
and they they rushed him back on the field, similar to what the Chargers do with their players. And every time they did, it ended up being an injury again. Did anybody notice that when he came to Kansas City, he had two issues? One was a calf tightness or hamstring tightness, I'm sorry. And the second one was a slight ankle tweak. Mm -hmm. No more soft injury, soft tissue injuries. Why? Because our medical staff knows how to address it. They gave him, you know, you give him a nutrition plan to go on, and that helps out a lot. You know who had a whole lot of injuries like that? Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Tyreek Hill had a shit ton of calf, hamstring, and soft tissue injuries. Yes, he played through a lot of them, but he still had them. Reason being is because the man has a, and I hate to say this, but he's got little man syndrome. And he has to be the strongest. He has to be the fastest. His legs have to be the biggest. When he came to Kansas City, he would run the entire stadium, every step at the stadium for six to seven hours a day. He would take 30 second, sometimes not even 30 second breaks between two rows of steps through all of the bleachers. And he would run the entire stadium all day long. He ran hills all day long. So it's does that surprise us? I mean, Tarek Hill is a hard worker. I have to say, he's one a very day, hard worker coming where he was in 2015 to where he's at now. I mean, he did nothing but work and work. Oh, work. I absolutely. Hi, I mean, Jalen Ramsey said he's an all team return specialist, and then Tyreek Hill went out there and beat him. I mean, that's how Tyreek Hill is. I mean, he's a great runner, he can be the running, he could play all the positions wide receiver, he could play in the slot, and he could play the running back. He blocked JG, JJ Watt on the uh, on the uh, Caught, forgot what play when the Chiefs came back 24 nothing. I mean, he's relentless. So when the Chiefs traded him and got five picks returned, it was one of the smartest things they could have done at that point. Absolutely. I mean, and I don't and have his work ethic that. is fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say it's not, but what I'm saying is your muscles can only take so much. And I think we could, unless he's working crazy, we could see, uh, like uh, Clinton says, uh, He's going to have a point where it's going to start dipping. And we sell with a lot of different players. Yeah. Um, they're we probably, plateau. I mean, plateau, I mean, he's on a trajectory. He's doing well. Then we see him dropping off. I mean, I don't know how it's going to work with the Dolphins. I mean, they're getting loaded. I mean, they may get Dalvin Cook. I mean, at this kind of see at this point, a lot of stuff could happen. If he can keep it up for another year or two, great. But there's going to be a point where he's going to drop off something he can't do as much as he used to, like Dante Hall. Like Dexter McCluster, like Dwayne Bow, like all these Chiefs great. Jamal Charles came down with those knee injuries. It's it's something is going to happen eventually, and we'll have, we'll see. I wish nothing but the best. I would like for him to come back to Kansas City, but I think that bridge is unfortunately oh, yeah, burned. He, burned at this he, point. he caught that, that bridge on fire more than once. Burned, yeah. yeah, he's been burned like five times. Yeah, so. he burned that bridge with every Chiefs player standing on the bridge. I mean, he just burned mm-hmm. that bridge. It was like mm-hmm. man, he went in and caught Arrowhead on fire, but. He, he's adamant about retiring after this contract. So That's fine. I mean, he does, and if he, he does. wants to retire after this contract, which I think he's not going to see that fourth year. So he might, I mean, I, I think what bothers me about it is that he wanted to be the highest paid <clears throat> wide receiver in the league. And Tyron, you can, I mean, you know, you know football well enough to know this, that that's a fictional number. That $30 million a year is a fictional number. Well, the big thing that's always going to be there is taxes. Well, not they just that. The number, you you high, so they can get as close as they can. Yeah, but you never get that kind of money. The first year is always, mm-hmm. you know, you'll get 5 to $8 million of it plus a signing bonus. You may get to $15, 18000000 million. The second year, it may be $24 million. The third year, you'll restructure something or they'll move, move some money around. All your money is backloaded. So it comes in the third and fourth year. Mm-hmm. If you're not producing in the third year, there's an out for that team. Yeah. At the end of that third year, you're out no matter what. So you're not going to see every dollar of that money. What he, From what the Chiefs offered him versus what he missed out on is relatively the same. It's relatively the same. Yeah. If you take Super Bowl money, you take playoff money, endorsement money, and everything else that comes along with being a chief, and you add all that together, you're basically making the same amount of money as you're making with the Bronco or with the with the Dolphins. Mm. It maybe maybe you may be making a little less with the Dolphins because they didn't. I mean, they sniffed a playoff game. They sniffed it. I mean, it's just not. It's not feasible. I think a lot of the times these guys, their ego gets in the way, and they want to see that big number. Oh, that big giant number, it says $30 million. 
I know I'm only getting 5.8 million of that, but I want to see the number on the contract that says $30 million. I want to be the highest paid guy, even though you're not the highest paid guy. Frank yeah. Clark just went through that. I mean, he just lost. I mean, I think at the end of his deal, he was what? $32 million is what he was owed from the chiefs. He got seven and a half million of it. So that tells you how it actually works. And really, if he had came back to the chiefs for all intents and purposes, he got offered from what I understand, $4 million. Now, mm-hmm. if he had come back with the 4 million, that's $11.5 million he'd have made for one season to come back and get his sack record, by the way, mm-hmm. and most likely get playoff money, most likely get Super Bowl, that million dollar Super Bowl money. Yeah. But yet he chose to go to the Broncos for five and a half million guaranteed. And then the taxes are higher in, in Colorado. The income tax is insane there. I think it's like 23%. So when you figure in how much money he's going to pay his agent, he's going to pay Think about it. you're paying your agent, whatever it is, whether it's 3%, 5% or 8%, doesn't matter. Then you figure in state income tax, federal income tax. Every state that you play in, you pay taxes in that state because you worked in that state. Then you got city earnings tax that you have to pay as well. In California, city earnings tax is every, I mean, you could cross the street and have to pay city earnings tax in two different places. So not only are you pay, paying city earnings tax where you live, you're paying where you work. Kind of mm. like how it is for people that live in Kansas and Missouri. It's the same thing. You work in Missouri, you live in Kansas, you pay earnings tax on both sides. Vice versa, it's the same thing. He's not going to make nearly the kind of money. That $5.5 million may be guaranteed, but he's going to see about $3 million or less of that. Mm. He's not going to get his incentives. He's not. There's no way he's going to get those incentives. Not with that football team. So I think it was a mistake on his part, but I like Frank. We got to interview him. He was a great guy. He he let us interview him over everybody else, Channel 5, The Star, uh, another group. I mean, he's a great guy, and I, I still love Frank to this day. If he came back tomorrow, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. But he was going to come back and play for the Chiefs, but he got duped. You know, I mean, he got his agent in his ear. He he's got a little extra money thrown at him, and he took off. So it is what it is. Neil Smith did the same thing, but Neil got a ring. Neil didn't get a ring with Kansas City. He got mm-hmm. it with he got it with the Broncos. Mm-hmm. But who did he retire as? Chief. He retired a chief. Yep. And where does he live? Blue Springs. Where does he live for the last thirty years? Blue Springs. Mm. Yeah. So you know, I don't know. Uh, it just is what it is, but the, the Chiefs are looking at a veteran defensive player right now. Um, I did want to ask around a little bit. They've talked to like four. Um, one of them that I would like to see them get, if if it happens, is Yannick. And God? Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know they have talked to him. I know that Carlos Dunlap has been brought up again, but Yannick would be a great – a great player if, if that can get worked out. But mm-hmm. a lot of that's going to depend on restructure money. Okay. Chris Jones is the only one that right now had agreed to a deal. The deal was agreed upon. It was worked on during the, I mean, honestly, it was worked on before the Super Bowl, and it was supposed to have been done. Now he's holding out again. This is the same thing he did the last time. Now, whether he wants to, um, you know, if he wants to go ahead and sign, he loves Kansas City. He loves being here. I'm sure he's going to re- re-sign. I think it's going to be earlier than it was the last time. Um, it's not going to be the end of the season or, you know, the beginning of the next season. It's going to be – I think it, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen prior to the season or right at the season starting. So but he has to play for us no matter what this year. He doesn't have a choice. Unless we decide we want to trade him, which I don't think they're going to do, it's – He's got. It. He's gonna have. He'll figure something out. Well, you're saying Gakwe. What do you from you on here from you guys? What are some other defensive players you think the Chiefs could probably try to trade for? I'm just kind of curious. Um, we we'll hear from Tyron first. You said trade for? Yeah, trade for or pick up any defensive ends or just defensive players in general. To kind of help. Is there one mm-hmm. in particular you would like? I mean, JP just said in Gakwe. I think he's a free agent. He's played with the Jaguars for a couple from quite yeah. a few years. I think that I think that would be 
a good one. Um, well, shoot, if it, if it hadn't worked out in Jacksonville's favor with him, like, having, like, a little bit of a resurgence, mm-hmm. I would like to see Josh Allen. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were all hoping that last year. We were on Josh Allen watch. I remember everyone was like, oh, is Josh Allen going to come here? Mm-hmm. Everybody tried. Everybody tried. I mean, it wasn't like it didn't. It didn't. You know who else that everybody's really down on is um, – and why does his name just slip my mind? Um, Washington. Mm. Um, what's his name? Chase Washington. Young. Chase, Chase Young. Young. Chase Young, yep. Now, think oh. about it like this. You give – and that's another player that I know that can work out with the Chiefs is that you got Clyde edwards helaire that we don't want. He doesn't want to be here. Mm-hmm. EB likes him. You give Clyde, you give Clyde to them, and maybe a fifth to a set, six round pick. Let's just say mm-hmm. a fifth round pick, and then you get Chase Young and a six round pick back. Hmm. What's wrong it, with that? And the reason why I think it will work is this: you have two first round picks who just not pan out. Just do the swap, throw some picks in there, call it a day. Yeah. After Chase Young is not working well with the Washington football team. Clyde edwards alaire is not really working with the Chiefs. They both have a glimpse of success, but a lot of struggles with injuries. I think this is the trade you uh, switch. I believe the Chiefs should give them a fifth round pick and return JP, give them back a sixth round pick, just because of obviously there's a there's a difference between the two players. So that is one player I would like to see in order to help. I mean, if that could happen, I mean, awesome. I don't know if you guys saw this. He was actually uh, – Chase Young was actually here in Kansas City during the draft. Yes, he was. So, I don't know if that was anything right there, him just hanging out. But, hey, I would, I would take that in a heartbeat. I, I don't think he was just hanging out. I'll just say that. I don't okay. think he was just hanging out. He didn't pull the Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Tyreek can't get Kansas City out of his head. Man's been back to Kansas City like five times in four months. Yeah. I don't know why the hell he keeps showing up. It's not like he owns a house there. He rented that house he was in. Mm. So, I don't know what he's doing, but – it is what it is. The thing with Chase is that he doesn't. He didn't just show up for no reason. Mm. So, I would say uh, keep keep everybody's eye open on Chase. Mm. You know that that's one player. But Yannick, I heard, I know for a fact they've talked to. Act by the way, uh, Trey Flowers. Okay. So don't don't sleep on Trey Flowers. You know, I'm just saying, don't sleep. And on then him. that guy from the Vikings, uh, I think Hunter. I think his name Darnell Hunter. Yeah, Darnell Hunter. Yeah. Yep. So that's another one. Go, go ahead, man. I was just saying I like him too. Um, I I would like Chase Young a lot. Yeah. Like I think I, I think he would be a good fit. Um, like him and Carloftis Oof. together. That would be <laughs> that's scary. That's scary. So, um, but I do think it would be good to have a another veteran presence there to just help mentor the, the young guns yeah. in the room. Just like, like Carlotta said, like he was like, I love, like, I love Frank to death. Mm-hmm. Like that was, that was his guy too. And so I think just another veteran presence in there, like I'd be okay with bringing Carlos Dunlap back. Me like too. I, when, when he was on the field, he, he produced. Yep. So like, he took advantage and maximized every snap that he was on the field. And so, and I, I think that's something that, as a fan, I admire because I just – I don't like it when players take plays off. Yeah. Like, I see what you're saying. Yeah, for example, like Tyron Matthew, I love Tyron Matthew to death. Like I I grew up watching him when he played college ball at LSU. Mm-hmm. All of them all the way. And when we signed him in 2019, like that, that was the first jersey that I went, went and bought. I was <laughs> like, I need, I need to get me a Tyron Matthew jersey. Mm-hmm. And, but dude, like the last year that he was in Kansas City, dude took plays off, man. He did, and I'm like, yeah, like the I, heart was, passion wasn't yeah. there. There yeah, was some, so. there was some reasoning behind that. I mean, oh yeah, for sure. There was a lot of internal problems going on with, you know, uh, a defensive line coach, a secondary coach, issues with Spags not listening to the players. Um, Sam Madison was a massive issue. To me, to be honest with you, he was a massive issue, and he caused a lot of problems for not only Tyron Matthew, but he caused problems for Thornhill, and that was a huge issue. Matthew played very well with Thornhill. 
mm-hmm. he knew that Sorensen was not great outside. He got burnt. He was responsible for so many touchdowns and so many wide open catches that it just pissed Matthew off. And he assumed in his mind that people were laying down and not doing their job. So he just, you know, decided he was going to prove a point. Mm-hmm. And that point got him sent off to the, you know, to Louisiana. So um, retirement home or to the retirement Atlanta home. second contract. Atlanta. So you have yeah. four, four so, or five former Chiefs players are on there. You got Dirty Dan, you got Passigno, you got Saunders, you got Matthew, and you got I think there's one more. I mean, they're just yeah, there in. is one more, and I can't think of who it is, but you're right. I mean, they, they all got shipped down there, and there's a reason behind it, but. You know, that all that headache is gone, which is nice. And we got a group of young, crazy ass good secondary guys that, you know, dis- all rookies last year up until about week eight. They weren't rookies after that. Mm-hmm. They were just freaking stars. I mean, all of them were. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of like when we lost Ward. I was pissed about losing Ward. He was one of the most consistent CBs we had in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't the pick machine that everybody wanted him to be. But, again, if you understand football, it's a similar with Frank Clark. Frank Clark didn't get all the sacks, but yet he covered that corner very well. He was still the fastest off the ball, and he pushed everybody to the other side. And how many running backs did you see come his direction? Not very damn many. So hmm. Ward was the same way. He didn't allow a lot until we played the Bengals, and they left him out there alone on an island by himself, which was just fucking stupid. But they did it, and they also left Fenton out there, which is even worse. I mean, yeah, it was a little rough time. <laughs> that was a mistake, a huge mistake. So the the addition of Joe Cullen and uh, what's his name, Andy Heck, that changed everything with our team. It really did, and I think J- Jones knows that. Chris Jones absolutely knows that. He knows that his production doubled if not more, because of Joe Cullen and the way he schemed up that defensive line. It is what it is. Um, it was just – and look, Carlos Dunlap, For the, if anybody wants to complain, the man was 34 years old, and he batted down a pass, I think it was 16 out of 17 games last year. Mm. So – and he was never not in the backfield. You never seen him not in the backfield. He was always stopping something from happening. He wanted to play more snaps, but the Chiefs were smart. They didn't pull the Buffalo Bills. They didn't put him in a position that he had to um, be that quote-unquote starter and end up blowing out a knee or blowing out an ankle or doing something to end your season at 33, 34 years old. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bills did to Von Miller. They saw how well he was playing. They overplayed him, and they got him injured. And that started the downfall of the trust factor of Sean McDermott. Mm -hmm. That's what started the trust factor issue. And that's exactly what I was told by my guy out in Buffalo. And that, and you're seeing the repercussions of it now. You got a diva that doesn't want to play. You got locker room issues. They didn't do much to help, really. I mean, they signed one good player, out, one really good player out of college, but uh, it just kind of is what it is. And hey, I wanted to play this for you, Tyron, because we love it so much. And I know you can remember this because I do. Let me play this for you really quick. According to Ian Rappaport, Pacers are trading back. They're trading back. They're trading back. They're trading back. Meanwhile, the Patriots just traded down. The Chiefs just traded up from 29. Did you hear him? Did you hear him? He said, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no. I, I remember that quite quite well. I will never lose yeah. that video, dude. I will never. I've got that thing saved in like five clouds. I, I mean, honest to God, I will never lose that video. Just It was the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping for another one this year, but it just didn't happen for us. But I've been perfect. They did it to the Bengals, but it just didn't happen. That's fine. I'm not going to yeah, have one there. So. Exactly. So... I don't know, uh, but I think, you know, you're going to see right – probably I'm going to say right before training camp, a, d- a defensive edge, one of those guys is going to get signed. 
Mm-hmm. That's going to be right before training camp. I agree with you, too. So, well, we got a comment here. Who is it? Um, he said, that's right. That's right. He said, that's why they drafted Witherspoon this season. You're right. Um, stole McDuffie from the Bills. Absolutely, mm-hmm. we did. What Barry say? I didn't see Barry's up here. He said, there's, he said, there's a Viking and a Colt out there for the Chiefs. Uh, front four worth the money. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, as far as Frank not having really anything sp- left in the tank, he actually does. I think you have to look at what Frank went through, and this is what I explained to people prior to it even coming out. Mm-hmm. He's dealt with a stomach issue, and we talked about it on this show for, what, three years, Caleb? I mean, it, it, yeah. he's had a stomach issue that will never go away. He dealt with that, and he played through a lot of it. Um it just happens. Mm-hmm. You can't control what happens to your body. Now, when he went through his depression and he, he, um, you know, he felt like he wasn't doing all of what he should be able or could be able to do, that was on him. But Andy helped him, and we talked about that as well. And Andy helped him a lot. And then that came out, and Andy did help him a lot. Which I'm, that's what surprises me a little bit about him leaving um, mm. to go to, especially to the Broncos. But it kind of is what it is. He's friends with Russ. Um, he knows all the, the hate that Russ got. And um, maybe he just, you know, the money and the fact that he said he wanted to stay within his division that he knows. Every I, We seen go to the Raiders. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. the one thing I will say is John Gruden did this the first time he was with the Raiders, and he actually did it. The second time he was with the Raiders, he poached players from us that either we weren't going to sign or weren't going to sign for big money, thinking he's going to get information out of them. It's a huge mistake to do that against Andy Reid because Andy Reid is not – when you get a play sheet from Andy Reid and you're not Patrick Mahomes or Matt Nagy, Mm -hmm. your play sheet is exactly what your play sheet is for that week, and it's defensively. So if they think Frank Clark – is going to give them a bunch of information that's going to help them. He's not. Because Mahomes mm-hmm. has changed his game. The wide receivers are different. Everything has changed right now. So it's not going to help them defensively in from a I guess from a intelligence standpoint, you know, if you if you will, but maybe you know, I hope Frank does well. I really do. I like Frank and I hope he does well but it's not going to help them as far as learning anything about what the chiefs do. Mm-hmm. So kind of is what it is. What do you think, Tyron? Yeah, I, I, I think I love, I love Frank Clark, man. Like that, he, he really, he really turned it around and just, I just love the, the shot of him after the Super Bowl. And he just, he's weeping, just sobbing. Yeah. Cause like it's, he puts his whole heart into it and just everything that it, like all the adversity that he faced during the season and before the yeah. season as well. Um, yeah, I just – I love Frank. I, yeah, I hate to see him go, especially to Denver. Oh, that just – that literally put a pig in my stomach. I was so mm-hmm. – I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else. Mm-hmm. yeah. Literally anybody else. But, um, but yeah, man, I think – I, I'm really, I'm really excited for the season. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what our defense does because they're, they're going to be young, fast, secondaries, solid. Um, I really like Brian Cook. I think there's a reason why they let Thornhill go. Um, and um, our linebacker core, I like Leo Chanel, Nick Bolton, of course. Willie Gay, Willie Gay is my favorite, my favorite guy on defense right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, he, just bring, he just brings a different, a different energy, man. And I just, I really like him. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited for this season. Um, I'm trying to get to a, to a, to a couple games this year. Um, I'm actually going down to New Orleans because my mom lives in New Orleans. Okay. Uh, and we're going to the first preseason game. In August, oh, so because cool. she doesn't really get to a chance to get up here and uh, come to Arrowhead, um, but she's she's like I'm determined to come this year. 
to, to Arrowhead. She's like, I got to. So she hasn't been in probably 2016. So um, get her up here, get to Arrowhead, tailgate, get the whole full experience, especially being the reigning Super Bowl champions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Be a good time. Yeah. Good times. Well, um, any predictions real quick from you on the season, like record-wise? We all put ours out. Let's hear yours. I say the floor is probably uh, 12 and 5, but ceiling probably 14 and 3, if not 15 and 2. Like, I, really, yeah. nobody scares me. Nobody okay. scares me. No. Nah. Schedule. I think, I think the part of, of our schedule that's difficult is like the scheduling itself. Um, yeah. Because there's a lot back to back games that are really tough. Um, and like week four, I think it's week four against the Jets on Sunday Night Football. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to that's gonna be, I think that's going to be a tough one. Um, just because you're on the road early in season, it's always tough. But I know Andy gets those boys into shape. Mm-hmm. And that's why we've been one of the most successful team over the last 10 plus years. Yeah. So, um, well, I agree. Well, I don't know if you've heard of them, but I have. Um, this show is sponsored by Manscaped. Have you heard of them? I have. Okay. Well, um, if you guys haven't seen it, you need to go on to manscaped.com, use the promo code Chiefs Focus, and get 20% off your entire order. Um, if you do that, DM us your receipt. We will enter you in for. The 4.0 kit. Oh, it comes wow. with everything you need. It's about a $179 kit. comes with some really uh, cool items. It's not just for your balls. So everybody out there that's uh, worried about just for your balls. I mean, hell, you got a beard. It's got a great beard, you know, grooming kit. It's got shampoo. They've got shampoo. They've got body wash. They've got conditioner. They've got razors. They've got everything you ever need. Plus, you can take care of your nuggets. But uh, it's one of the best items. We, we got them sent to us and i was like wow i never i never dreamed about using this kind of stuff and then we did and wow unbelievable that's a huge difference um all the way around and by the way it comes with a pair of underwear boxers that are just amazing most comfortable damn things i've ever worn um so get your you know go on go on manscape.com and check it out you guys won't be uh, disappointed but with that being said i don't think we have anything else to you no they're all good to go yeah. All right, then. Well, man, we really appreciate you jumping on. And well, thank um, you. We will definitely have you on again. Um, whenever you want to come on, you can just jump on, give us a call, give us a text, whatever it is you want to do, and we'll have you on again. But with that being said, we will talk to you guys later on. Peace out. <laughs>